Good evening. Um, I would like to start out by thanking the players today. You know, we had to release a lot of players uh, today that came into my office and Ryan's office, and we had a conversation with those guys. And as you know, that's always difficult. You know, you're you're talking to a wide range of ages and, you know, obviously positions and where they are in their life. And I think that's uh, – I want to just say thank you to those guys because they were all professional. Uh, they all loved uh, being part of, the, of what we're doing, and they were excited about being part of that, and that didn't happen for them today. Um, so, but again, you know, some of those guys will get a chance to add to the practice squad, which will, which would be great. Um, so we're looking forward to that. So definitely that. So, and I also want to thank the uh, personnel department, the coaches, um, everybody involved with this process because you know we started back way back, you know, started training camp, having these personnel meetings, and talking about you know various you know players and you know what their, their skill sets are and what they do for our football team. And you know, that's a process to go through that to figure out you know what we're going to do at the offensive line for say you know and then receiver and all the positions that we had uh, to work through and we I thought we did a really good job working together on that so I just want to thank the coaches um, and the personnel department um, and then going forward you know when we look to add players you know we're looking at you know guys that we could potentially claim you know guys we can add and that's a year long process that that we go through um, to always improve our roster. Um, we're always going to be obsessed with that. We're always going to look for guys that have the, the traits we're looking for, the long, speed, athletic, striking type players um, that we want to have on our roster. So we're always going to look to improve that. Um, you know, in terms of the, uh, you know, anything injury-wise, you guys know that the injury report officially comes out next Wednesday on September 7th. So everything else is day-to-day -day, uh, until that point, and then we'll work from there. And I believe uh, that's well, all I have right now. I'll open up to questions. Yeah, with the receiving core specifically, you obviously have to balance long-range plans with the urgency of playing a game. And right. Where are you at right now with that, given the number of unhealthy bodies and the number of healthy bodies? Yeah, we feel good. We feel good where we are. Um, we really do. We, you know, we uh, obviously with, doesn't look good out there. We had some guys that were out. You know, we only had three or four guys out there today. So, but those guys are all. We feel good where they are in terms of. Uh, coming back and, and being available to us here shortly. So um, we're in a good spot. Coach, last year you were coaching a team that had legitimate Super Bowl aspirations coming into that season. This year you're taking over a team that has a, you started, started from scratch. You're building the foundation. Is there a difference in how you go about evaluating and choosing your 53-man roster based on where you are in that process? Do you now view it as more thing, look towards the future that will allow you to maybe say, this veteran's nice, but he won't be there when we're ready. And so you kind of lean toward younger talent. Is there a difference in how you go about choosing your 50? No, that's a good question. That is a good question. And I think you look, you do look at it that way in some regards. Uh, but in other ways, you got to just build your best football team you can this year. And that's really what we did in the beginning, of, you know, with that last organization. We just said, hey, we're going to build the best roster we can this year with the players that we, we uh, you know, covet um, on our football team and then go from there. You know, and then coach them up and develop them. You know, it's the, it's the it's the coach's job to develop the athletes and develop the players. You know, into our system and our style. And uh, that's why we we believe in teaching. Um, and you know, we have a really good personnel department. They they really covet the things that the coaches do, and we're in line that way. So it, uh, we're excited about building that. When you were in Indianapolis, I saw you were quoted as saying that you cannot be afraid to put young players in there right away. How did you kind of come to that? Philosophy, because there there are coaches, and I'm sure you've encountered them, who you know, really think those young players are the ones that can get them fired. That yep. they're they're a little gun shy to put those guys out. There. Yeah, and and uh, you know uh, you can understand uh, a coach that's like that. You know, is a little bit gun shy, wants to play with the more experienced guy because he's know what he's doing and all that. But to me, if you got the right guy, you know, and you have the right guys in there and they're young, you have to play them. You have to because the experience they get in that first season that's playing, it's invaluable. You know, they're going to get learned so much ball by being out there and playing rather than sitting on the sideline. And if they're good enough athletically and they're good enough players, you just got to put them out there and they'll, they'll figure it out eventually, you know, and then you just got to coach them up and coach them through the ups and downs of it and, you know, keep their confidence up. But uh, I believe in that because what you do is you build a faster, younger football team when you do that. Is, is that something that you kind of develop – as a coach in college, or did did someone kind of impart that to you once you got to the NFL? Because in college, you know where you were at, you, you got to play some. Young yeah, I guess I guess you're right in that way. Uh, I would say that's probably true. You know, just because I was in college for those you know 17, 18 years, uh, we were playing 
freshmen and playing guys that were young all the time. You know, it's like when we took over Missouri, man, we played some young guys, and that was just normal. So it was your job to develop them, coach them up, make sure they know what they're doing. And they can play fast and play physical and, and play the ball the right style. So um, that's been part of my, 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 my thing. And, our, and I've got the right coaches. The coaches we have are the right coaches to do that because they are, they are there to help the players and their teachers. You know, so we feel that we're, we're very confident in doing that. Yeah. How do you determine how long the leash is with those guys? Because I imagine you'll sink or swim with Gordon and Brisker. But some of the guys who are kind of more in between, they're, they're not, they'll be active, they'll be playing. But right. how, how, how do you determine how long the leash is? And given the situation, you know, like Herb said, not, it's, this might not be a Super Bowl team or whatever. You're trying to build something. Mm -hmm. but how, does, how does all that work? Yeah, I, I just think you use your instincts on that. You know, you have your instincts as a coach, and you know when you're working through with somebody and they're doing a good job and they're, they're, they're taking two steps forward and a step back and they're getting better, you know, as a, as a rookie does. Or if a guy's, you know, kind of struggling and you need to, you know, kind of slow his, uh, his uh, you know, putting him in the game as much. You know, sometimes that happens and they'll let us know what they can handle. You know, they'll let us know what they can handle. So we'll, we'll go from there. Is Tongas, a, is Tongas a tight end or a fullback? And do you need to you, you look like right there right now. Yeah, I, I think he's, he's done a good job to show us he can do both. You know, and that's a, that's a hard thing for a defensive coordinator to, to really, hey, does this guy play tight end? Does he play on the ball? Does he play wide? Does he move? Does he get back into the fullback position? And can he run the leads? And that creates a whole other, uh, you know, a dynamic for the, for the defensive coordinator to be able to play. Is he, gonna, is he gonna play 12? Is he gonna play nickel? Is he gonna play base to it? What's he gonna do? So that's, that to me is a good thing. Matt, along the lines of the young players, how positive of a development is it that all the 11 draft picks make the roster, three undrafted guys for Ryan Wolf and his staff to come in and, and hit on guys you obviously like and have coached up? No, it's, it's, it just shows the, the hard work they put in. You know, with uh, you know, looking at these guys all the way through, and then really pulling the trigger on draft day. You know, to get them and 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 get the guys that we covet, and they did a really good job with that. And now it's you know for the coaches too. You know, the coaches are developing those guys, so it works hand in hand to get those guys ready to play. And uh, so yeah, I think that's really good. Two, two part question on Lucas Patrick when he, with his prog progression and, and possibly getting back out there soon. Would you consider him playing him somewhere other than center? If he's healthy enough, but just not quite able to. Sweep well, he's played multiple positions, you know, mostly interior, you know, so he's played guard and he's played center. So I would never rule that out, you know, what's best for our football team, you know, and I think we got to look at that, you know, always, we're always looking at that best lineup, what's best for the team, uh, where that individual is in terms of his health and where he is. So we're, we're going to be open minded to that. And as an extension of that, when, when he's ready to play center again, if he plays center, what happens with Sam? What's, what's your thought process on what Sam's shown you through? Yeah, I mean, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, you know, we'll see where that is and see where we go with it. But uh, we're not there yet in terms of seeing where he is. Yeah. What's, your, what's your assessment right now of, of the corner position? And, you know, let's talk about young guys. I think, I think Duke might be the guy with the most experience in that room. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Jalen's played a lot, Kendall's played a lot. But what's kind of your assessment of where that group's at right now? Yeah, they're in a good spot. I mean, it, it is where, where we are right now. I mean, you know, Jalen's been out for a couple of days, you know, and we'll see where they are. You know, Villar's been playing, had a good game, and, you know, we got, you know, uh, our, our nickels, you know, setting in there pretty good, does a nice job. But, uh, you know, the thing is that you're, you know, you're looking to always uh, improve everywhere, you know, and I think that's, a, that's a, a spot that we're always looking to improve. You know, if you can get, you know, guys that are, you know, competing, you know, another roster and bring them in, we're going to do that every spot. You know, so I think that's an important piece there, and I, I think we're uh, we're that's still a spot that's in competition. I believe that is true. Coach Jackson, or was there a moment when you said, "Hey, we got to give this guy a closer look here"? Yeah, I mean, you, you, when guys make plays, when they make plays in games, and they and they're instinctual, and they make plays like that, you know, I think that uh, you always take a look at those guys because when you hit the ball and and you do things that change football games, you you give guys a chance. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you're always looking at that, and he's he's good in the open field, makes good open field tackles and special teams. So we're excited where he is and where he's developing to. Dave Borgonzi's done a great job getting him in the position um, and letting him flourish in that spot. With regard to Sam Bourne, is there something he did or something about him that you think you obviously did well to make the team or wherever he ends up? But is there something that tells you that it might be more than that this year, or it, or is it just is he just another undrafted rookie who? 
Tried hard, made the team, made plays, made the team. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. You know, we don't like we said we don't put ceilings on players, and we'll see we'll see where it goes. You know, and uh, we're going to leave it open and let him compete. And uh, you know, he's done a good job to this point, and he's you know obviously a rookie, and he's got a long way to go. Um, but uh, we like where he is right now, and uh, he's done a good job, and he's really showed a lot of grit, a lot of toughness uh, through the course of training camp. And that's what we like. Analysts across the country saying that this team may be in the running for a top draft pick with you know worst record in the league. You go out, you go three and on the preseason, and now you got people. It's a foregone conclusion you're going to beat the Pack. I mean, the 49ers, and you could be going up there feeling good about yourself in Green Bay. How do you balance letting your guys know I'm proud of the work that you have done, but we still got a ways to go, and not to get too excited about the the, the perfect preseason. Yeah, I, I think our guys are, are are really good are in a really good spot there. You know, we, we know where we are. We're we're developing. Um, we're we're setting foundation, um, and we're nowhere near where we want to be. Um, and guys know that. Guys know that. And we point that out on tape. They understand. Hey, the effort's got to be better. The intensity's got to be better. We have to do a lot of things uh, uh, better. So, um, and we're working on that. And we're in process of doing that. And guys understand where they are. Yeah, throughout the course of the training camp of the preseason, you've had a lot of different moving parts defensively, guys coming in and out with injuries and obviously missing Rokon for the period. But where's your confidence in kind of the what the culture that you built has created for that group and the identity that's forming despite, you know, the differences coming in and out? Yeah, you're going to have that. You know, you're always going to have soft tissue injuries during training camp and, you know, during the course of the year, guys are going to come in and out. The one thing that stays uh, consistent is that, is the standard. Um, that's for the whole football team, and that doesn't change. And those, that's, like, that's called controlling the controllables. So uh, when you can do that, you control the effort, you control the hitting, the intensity, the blocking down the field, um, you know, and, and playing a smart, aggressive football, that's always going to be what we're, what we're about. And uh, it doesn't matter. You get guys hurt, you get the next guy steps in, and those guys we acquire have those traits. They play hard, they're physical, and they're smart players. And uh, that's what we'll continue to do. Uh, but now it looks like he's going to have another opportunity here. Is there something about your scheme, Alan Williams' scheme, that makes you think he could he could have a better year, more success this year? Yeah, you know, like we started in the beginning, we said, hey, everybody's got a clean slate. You know, so we don't look at last year. You know, we look at we certainly look at skill sets from last year. But other than that, hey, it's clean slate. Everybody's got you know step one, and step two, go all the way through. And uh, you know, he's had a couple injuries during training camp, but he's put his best foot forward the last you know preseason game. So. You know, he is where he is right now, and he's got to keep working, you know, because I think in our scheme, a lot of times uh, th those outside guys can play well because it's a vision defense, you know, vision and break and play some more zone, you know, than more than most people, and I think he can have success there. When you first started out, you talked about the, the importance for Justin to stay in a growth mindset through the entirety of this process. I'm curious how you've assessed his ability to, to do that and where, where he's been at the last four months and getting ready for – Week one, which is obviously days away. Yeah, I mean, I mean that that position is is you, you are constantly growing, you know, because they're putting in new schemes, new concepts. Um, he has to learn and develop that way, uh, how he sees the game, you know, what his what his camera or what his eyes see, um, and I think that he's really done a good job with that. Janoko and Getzi have done a tremendous job of developing him, and working with him, and he has been working tirelessly to get that done. Uh, you know, the footwork and the timing and everything that's done. I think he's done a remarkable job from, to, from springtime all the way to now. He's just done a great job.